We've been waiting for this all season long. The finale. Here comes Lewis Hamilton though, down the back straight. South African motor racing has produced many talented drivers and one of the best is former world champion Jody Schechter. When you look at the countries that have hosted the Formula 1 Grand Prix, the nations on the current schedule are highlighted in green, with circuit locations marked in black. You'll notice something here. No African country will host any F1 races. When you look at the same map of countries that have hosted Formula 1, something becomes very clear. Morocco and South Africa have hosted Formula 1 before. But why, after 27 years, has it not yet returned? But since his 1973 victory, South Africa has failed to produce another top Formula One driver. Formula One is one of the most watched annual sporting events worldwide, attracting 445 million viewers across the 2021 season. The number of views in the previous year since 2018 fell within the range of 250 to 500 million annual views. In comparison to the FIFA World Cup, with the latest 2022 World Cup in Qatar gathering around 3.56 billion global views. And the Olympics, with the latest 2020 Tokyo Olympics recording approximately 3.5 billion views. In this video, we'll look at the benefits South Africa may get from hosting this event, and we'll analyze if there are any financial benefits long term. We'll look at the challenges encountered by countries similar to South Africa when hosting F1 events. We will introduce different hosting scenarios for South Africa. South Africa is one of the leading countries globally in terms of interest in Formula One, meaning that the sport is significantly popular in the country. According to Google Trends, the popularity of Formula One in South Africa is similar to that observed in other countries such as the United States and the United Kingdom. A closer look at this popularity trend indicates that interest rises in months before and following major Formula One events. For instance, the popularity in 2024 rose to its highest peak at 100 during the 2024 Bahrain Grand Prix. For those wondering what is Formula One and why are South Africans so interested in it? Formula One is a racing competition where drivers compete in specifically designed cars called Formula One cars on a closed circuit track. A race typically lasts for two hours and the winner is the driver who completes the most laps in the shortest amount of time. The games could host up to 200,000 people. Each event, or what is known as a Grand Prix, is three days long and divided into three sections, practice, qualifying and race day. South Africa has a proven track record of successfully hosting major international sporting events. The country's well-developed infrastructure provides a perfect location for a variety of sporting competitions. Some of the most notable events South Africa has hosted include the 1995 Rugby World Cup, the 2003 Cricket World Cup, the 2010 FIFA World Cup and the African Cup of Nations on multiple occasions. The events have boosted tourism and positively impacted the economy. Establishing South Africa is a premier destination and fit to host the Formula One tournament. The South African Grand Prix in Johannesburg. The battle is on for the World Drivers' Championship. The last time Formula One raced in Africa was in 1993 at the Kailami Circuit near Johannesburg, South Africa. F1 initially came to Africa with the first race held in Morocco in 1958 before the race at the Prince George Circuit in East London in 1962. The 31-year break between 1962 and 1993 was associated with political tensions in South Africa. South Africa also unveiled the modern version of the Prince George Circuit, which remains to date, in 1959. YouTuber Cleo Abraham compiled annual reports for every F1 team she could find, a total of 8 out of 10. The finding was that running an F1 team costs anywhere around 95 to 425 million US dollars. To contextualize to South Africa, that is 1.71 to 7.65 billion rand. The year that these numbers were reported, F1 instituted a new rule saying that all teams will only be allowed to spend around 140 million US dollars. The findings were that F1 teams run surprisingly close to break even. It's not profitable now. Not, not in the moment. In the moment, I think we are, we are close to break even. Some critics question why profitable enterprises are participating in F1 if they're in a profitable. And so, why would we want South Africa to do it? 
These critics also point to a high unemployment rate in South Africa and living costs and standards and argue that this will be wasteful for South Africa. Even arguing that the average sports fan in South Africa would not be able to afford the tickets. Let's say that we were to host the F1. These are the two options for South Africa. One hosted in an existing FIA grade circuit or the second option is to host a street race. Let's look at the first option. Hosting an existing FIA grade circuit. Here we have Kailami, which is located in Johannesburg, South Africa. For a venue to be viable to host a modern F1 race, F1 requires the venue to have an FIA grade one circuit facility, which some of the aspects of the circuit are temporary, but grade one FIA licenses are given to facilities that meet precise specifications on the following. Tracks must be 3.5 to 7 kilometers long in total length, no single straight section longer than 2 kilometers, a minimum of 12 meters wide at all points. The first corner must have at least 45 degrees change of direction, with a radius under 300 meters. Start line proceeds at by around 250 meters and grid positions spaced 8 meters apart. Yeah, I mean, Kailami is a fantastic facility. It's a grade two FIA circuit at the moment, but it can be upgraded to a grade one. South Africa does not currently have any grade one circuits, with the Kailami Grand Prix classified as Africa's most prestigious motor track, certified as grade two racetrack. This accreditation was awarded to the circuit following the upgrade to 4.522 kilometer Grand Prix circuit. But how much will upgrading cost? For South Africa, upgrading means either constructing an entirely new FIA Grade 1 circuit or upgrading the existing Grade 2 Kaalami circuit to FIA Grade 1 standards. According to analyst from Car Magazine, changes on installations, adjustments to carbs, and replacement of gravel with tar in order for the circuit to be certified grade one accreditation it will approximately cost around 100 million rand let's look at the second option a street circuit race this will take place in cape town south africa but how will the street circuit race work if this were to be an option this street circuit hosted the 2023 fia formula e world championships the fifth round of the championship all five lights are on and we go green in cape town the Cape Town Street Circuit measuring approximately 3 kilometers long starting on here and ending up here. It features a mix of high speed straights and tight corners with overtaking opportunities alongside the Muli Point Beach. The iconic setting includes views of Table Mountain and Robben Island with existing infrastructure used for pit areas near the stadium. The next one I've been talking about is, is South Africa and that's what I'm pushing for in the background so hopefully you'll see that come to light soon as well. The one I really want to see is South Africa, says Lewis Hamilton on the next F1 race. South Africa knows how to host a sporting event. Whether it happens today or in the next 10 years, F1 needs to come back to Africa. Thank you. If you enjoy our content, consider subscribing or supporting our channel on Patreon. The 1982 season has just begun. The Kyle Lobby circuit in South Africa.